Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode of the Minecrafty stuff. Where this is some of the stuff we do in between streams. I have not really been doing very much of this, but found a little bit more time, and I'm excited to do this particular one because I've been doing a lot of mining on stream, which you'll know about if you have been watching either the streams or the summaries. Um, we want a way of see this mining backpack that I've got. This fills up with ore, and so does my inventory because not every ore goes in there. We want a way of getting back from mining, shoving everything into the same chest and having at least some of that handled in a good way. If we fling over to the storage, oh, apologies for the lagginess, uh, if we fling over to the storage, most of these will get filled up if you just double right click on this controller and from this chest box thingy, um, there's a servo pulling things out and into this, so things that can go in these drawers will go in these drawers, but we want our ores to be doubled or tripled where possible and we want all of the extra stuff we can get out of the ores to be got out of the ores automatically by shoving everything in this box which mostly we can do so we're gonna do this right now i'm gonna pause the video tristan's gonna help out i'm gonna get him on chat we're gonna plan out what we're gonna do i'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do and then we're gonna do it so there'll be a few pauses in this video but hopefully that works out better than just watching everything unfold so see you in a minute Okay, so we have started off a basic area out here, which is going to be for processing of the ores. There is a secret uh, elevator, and don't tell Mike that I've told everybody, so, you know, uh, in here, which takes us into the maintenance shafts. This is, this is the thing that Mike made ages ago. We saw it on stream a couple of uh, weeks ago, I think. And I made a, <laughs> I cheated with uh, a waypoint so that I knew how far away our new building was, so we're going to send all of the items in an incredibly large number of item ducts all the way down there and into there. Um, now there's ways we can do this so that it's not a problem, but the main easiest thing is going to come out of all of this is basically um, if we lock the drawers that Tristan's just put down, it will basically not send anything into the item ducts that cannot be stored at the other end. So we don't need to put any filters on, all we do is we put the things in here that we want and then lock them. Uh, I believe that is the case. So we've got three types of, three categorizations of ore, because the way that we're going to try and do it is to get as many um, of the precious ores as we can. And we can triple ores by using the induction smelter with uh, cinnabar or rich slag, um, which are two uh, byproducts of doubling some ores in the induction smelter. So if we're not worried about tripling them, we're going to double them if possible for uh, in the induction smelter with sand. And if we want the byproduct of pulverizing, we're going to do that instead. So this is actually, these, these are likely to be the, the cheapest ores because we don't mind about getting three of them, but also they don't have any special byproducts. For example, um, if you look at platinum dust, uh, oh, where is it? Is it just platinum? There is a side effect of pulverized platinum, that's right, um, which comes from in the pulverizer. Recipe, recipe, recipe. Uh, iridium turns into pulverized iridium and pulverized platinum, and also something else does? Nickel ore. 10% chance of getting platinum out of nickel. So nickel is definitely going in this chest because it doesn't matter if we get two of it, it what matters is we get 10% of platinum every time we pulverize it. So uh, I was going to put those underneath actually, Tristan, sort of okay. there, and the torches, because then we can put all the piping in the basement. So the point of me showing this uh, tunnel that was under here is I'm going to excavate all of this into a, a basement area. Um, and that will allow us to bring all the pipes in and do all the pipe work underground and then we've got plenty of room above ground for uh, a few machines basically. So at this point really it's just creating a lot of machines but I'll show you the basic positions of them when we're done. And this building that I've somewhat mapped out I think will be another multi-story building like that one where we've got a floor down here and the floor up there. In fact we could probably We'll probably put that floor on top of this layer. Oh, we're going to build a bridge across here, so that's going to look cool. But not in the next hour, <laughs> not in the next half an hour. So 
Um, we'll probably have a floor here, and then all of this can be on the ground floor, and then all of that can also be on the ground floor because that's how ground floors work when you're on a hill. So uh, I'll bring you back when we have done some more actual building of stuff, and you can see what I was talking about. See you in a minute. Cool, so we put these in, we showed you that. I've dug out under here. Well, Tristan and I have. So there's the tunnel I dig, dig, dig. Um, it's a bit messy right now. I'm sure we'll decorate it or we'll make Mike do it, so don't worry about that. These draw controllers now dangle underground, which is what these trims are for. So these trims don't store anything, they're quite cheap, but they connect the drawers to each other or to the controller. Point being that we're not connecting these drawers together, which is why we've got three controllers. Um, so if we connect item ducts to these, which will come from here, um, we're going to have item duct for input, power down the middle, and item duct for output. We don't want to connect those two together because we don't want a loop of things trying to go round and round or, you know, thinking that they can go into the nearest inventory. Maybe the nearest inventory is a dump chest miles away and then something frees up and has to come all the way back. So we make sure nothing comes up here if it can't get into anything. Um, basically, if we have an output chest or a dump chest over here, we want to make sure it goes down there and nothing comes up here into that thing. I'm sure we can use a server or something to prevent that, but I'm too lazy. The easiest thing to do is separate the two connections. We have all the ores that get put in the crate that we saw at the start of the video will come up this line, and literally the, all we have to do here is connect the line to these three things. And it will go into the first inventory that, it can, that can accept it, and each of these inventories, which are all the drawers, will only accept the things that the drawers have been locked to take. So nothing will come down the pipe that the drawers can't have in them and nothing will go in the wrong drawers, um, in theory, <laughs> until we connect things to each other by accident and don't notice, and then it all goes wrong. Until then, um, we then take things out of the side or the front or something with a servo, and then just up there, oh, my slime thing is not available, there we go. Just up here, uh, please be better at slime thing. thank you. I've mapped out where we're gonna put the machines. Right now, it's just one induction smelter for cinnabar, one induction smelter for sand, and then a pulverizer and a furnace. The pulverizer can auto output. So if you put the pulverizer next to the furnace and tell it to auto output, basically, it keeps going. Pulverize, pulverize, makes dust, puts the dust in the furnace. If you get a second output, um, like um, platinum dust, well, you can't do anything else with that. It has to go in the furnace. But it will wait until the nickel, for example, has been turned into bars. This, the system will pull things out of the furnace and put them into... Oh, Tristan, we need ingot uh, drawers. We can put those upstairs. So let's let's put a sign up here that says, what, debugging live, uh, ingo drawers. Done. So then we'll pull out of the furnace, probably from the back, just to make it easier to not accidentally connect the... Um, the, the pipes together and then this will have a well don't forget there's going to be a layer of wood on the bottom of that for the actual floor um, yeah by the way viewers we did discover that this cobble block here is at the same height as the floor in that building so all of this is going to get a layer of wood on top of it yeah it's going to look like that basically um, pipe out of here into here again lock those drawers and anything that won't go into the drawers will not be sent to the controller in the first place um, and yeah you, this will just wait for the furnace to be empty and then it will push the platinum into the furnace which will then get cooked up and pulled out and then when there's no more platinum or nickel in either of the slots in the pulverizer then another ore will be sent uh, yeah another ore will be sent to the pulverizer so the system won't it, it can't really go wrong because if there is anything in any of the inventories then the servers won't be able to send anything else and there's nothing that comes out of the pulverizer from any of those ores that can't go in a furnace which is why we've separated them because this one uh is there yeah there is there is so there's one or two things but ha, no i thought that what you do is you connect the pipe that comes out of the back of the furnace to this draw system here and then you have a sort of another chest over here basically no, well, that's the one that goes back, isn't it? We decided to just send that one all the way back down to the main drawers over there. So we, the, the system, the, the pipe system literally just prioritizes the nearest inventory. 
So it's gonna come out the back, it's gonna go up there. If it fits in there, it'll go in there. And if it doesn't, it goes all the way back down there, it spends about 20 minutes making its way to those drawers and finds that they're full too. But then it will just sit around in that big uh, crate that we've got over there. So that'll go back to resorting. Most things that come out of here, uh, this pulverizer, sorry, will be um, either furnace -y stuff or will go back in there. That's the point. We're going to have to use a pipe because if it won't go into the furnace, we need it to have the opportunity to redirect itself. So actually, this is the furnace here. And that kind of looks a bit weird because now it looks like that furnace belongs to that induction smelter, but it doesn't. So we put a pipe here. That way, if anything comes out of the pulverizer and won't go into the furnace, oh no, because then it'll send dust up there. Okay, we'll debug it. We'll debug this when I'm not recording video. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the general principle. We'll figure it out. Uh, we can also use filters to make sure that works. Done. Now, uh, then we've got this one. We're going to pull sand in from the main storage over there. So it's going to be quite slow to arrive, but it'll fill up. It'll hold a buffer, so that should be okay. We pull those ores from there. They get induction doubled, not tripled, but they produce cinnabar or rich slag which is going to be in one of these drawers as well as the ores that we want tripled. And then we put that, we can put it straight into here, to be honest. Now, because then if this is full of cinnabar, then that'll block up, so we won't do that. Um, I did consider basically having a drawer controller here and two drawers there just to hold that stuff and then pipe them out into that. Kind of up to Tristan, really. Because if you get, can you have a two by two drawer? A, a one by two drawer? Or two there are half one? drawers. Half drawers. So we could put a half drawer here and a controller here and just, We'll just pipe it directly into the half drawer and pipe it directly out of the half drawer and whichever one... Can we prioritise what gets pulled out? <laughs> I suppose it literally doesn't matter which one we use, is it? As long as there's cinnabar or slag in this drawer. So I'll put... Uh, actually, I was using sand for drawers. Have I got any sand left? Yeah. It'll prioritise the top... the one that's top in the drawers. I think it doesn't matter because they have the same effect, it's... don't they? in this induction smelter. They both triple it. There's not it's not like slag is worse at tripling. Is that correct? Yes, you just get this you get a different secondary product. Oh. That's fine. That's fine. So this is going to fill that up with whatever it can. If this runs out, then this may switch between cinnabar and slag depending on what's available, which is fine. We may find that at some point we want to force it to use cinnabar just to get the prime the secondary product. We could do that manually if we're not getting any of that. Just switch it around at some point. So we might as well just put a double draw in here rather than sending it all the way back down there and in here, and then a pipe in between. Then this one, again, same deal, stuff gets sucked out of there, put into this induction smelter, which will also contain cinnabar, that will triple that ore, and then all of these ores get put up there. And then anything that comes out of any of these machines that won't go up there, gets sent back to the storage system by means of the return pipe. Maybe we could make the return pipe transparent so that we can differentiate them. Oh, I wish you could label them, can you, can you dye them? Probably not, right? <laughs> item duck. duck. Item duck? No, item duck. No, they're just, uh, they're, there's different ones. The vacuum and dense, uh, those just, vacuum and dense just change the uh, apparent length of the tube so that vacuum ones things will prioritize and dense ones things will avoid uh, if possible. So that's the plan. Let's put it into practice and see where we are. See you in a minute. Okay, we've done some things. Um, we have a little bit of a, um, a blocker on how much redstone it costs us to make all of the item dots required to get from hither to yon, plus all of the redstone conduits we need to get the RF conduits to get from hither to yon. Um, we've filled up <laughs> a few drawers. We don't have many ores yet. There's a big list on our spreadsheet. Um, we don't actually have too many ingots or ores, but we put what we do have in. Stop counting, please. Uh, these ones, we don't have every single ore, even though we have some ingots because we've been using all the materials. So if we do pick up any gold ore, for example, we just shove it straight in a thing and use it make, to make gold. So we're going to have to collect some more items to fill up these drawers. We've got a long way to go before we can fill, because did you see how far it was, by the way, uh, viewers? <laughs> I'll show you. It's two slime slings from there to there. Uh, that's two and then some if you actually hit your head on the way through. Mike, your tunnel has insufficient headroom. So I think one of the things you might do off stream is to fill in the head bashing 
parts of the <laughs> this tunnel. Where did the where did the red? Oh, you're putting it up there. Hello. How are you doing this waving? By the way, I'm interested. It's in the chat. Bottom right. Emotes. Wave. Did it work? Yep. All right. Um, anyway, there's Tristan waving. I assume that all those redstone conduits have gone because they're moving upwards. Oh no, they're just over there. They don't go this far. So we've got all that way to go with these um, item ducts. I'm not entirely sure it's necessary to go this way and then all the way along there and then turn left again when we could just go from there to there with a tunnel, but that's okay. Um, there are skeletons dying nearby, which is also upsetting. Uh, and yeah, so our, our, our blocker at the moment in uh, Jira terms is that we can't get the items over there without a lot more redstone. So I'll leave this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope that we have at least shown you something. Um, Justin, if you've managed to perchance put the other um, machines down, or do we have them to put down? I've put the other one I do have down. Put the other one we do have down. So this one's going to accept cinnabar. In we can. By the way, we discovered. I'll show you the uh, configuration before I go. Actually, so this button here turns that on and off. Metallurgic flux is a posh word for sand, but except in this one, it's a posh word for cinnabar. So if you were to pipe in, let me show you how this configuration thing works. We might as well make it a little bit of a tutorial video. This square here ref refers to the bottom of the machine. If I click on it, this blue being blue now means if I have a pipe on the bottom of the machine, I can put things into it and they will arrive there. Click on it again, now it's red. If anything arrives in here and there's a pipe on the bottom, it will be put into the pipe. And now I can't put things in the bottom because it doesn't reference the blue one. The other one is, what's this, yellow maybe? That is, if anything happens in there, you get the idea. Um, and then you can have this combination where it's in either slot, it will go at the bottom. This one means it'll only go into that side. This one means it'll only go to that side. We're back to the beginning. Well, it's not, this will go into literally anywhere it will fit. And it's an output as well. So. That's kind of every mode, which is possibly a bit dangerous because we don't want things going out again. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it up. Hang on, what? Hey, Tristan, there's a grey version where nothing is selected, but there's a hole. And there's a very colourful version where everything is selected for going in. Are you seeing this? Yeah, that one's the everything's in and out. I don't know what the other one is. Yeah. I've never used it. Google it. Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments. So we're going to leave it on, and this uh, when it's blank like this, you can't put anything in and out at all. So we're going to leave it on this, because what should happen is with this on and that locked, the cinnabar will be forced to go in there, and the thing that is being you know tripled will be forced to go into there. Then, I guess we might as well use the back. So this one refers to the back. From the back, we'll output any uh, ingot that is produced and any slag that is produced or whatever comes out of there. Now, if this is uh, using cinnabar, actual cinnabar, then this will output some rich slag at, what was it, 75%? So that needs to make sure it goes back into the drawer where the rich slag is being stored. If this actually had rich slag in it, then this is going to put the output not rich slag, so poor slag. We want to send that back into the system to be dealt with uh, as befits a poor slag. So we want to make sure that we've got a locked drawer here. I think we can literally just link that back to that and it will just work because we can um, let me show you the back of it now that I've done that do, do. Uh, run across the gap nope <laughs> Heck. should have just done it properly in the first place Oop. Ding. oh thank you so now that you see the back of it, it it reflects on the real world as well so this is the output if we connect with pipes along here and the double drawer is here Rich slag will just go back into there and anything else can't because it will be locked. Uh, which is a great feature of drawers and I love it. Um, and then the rest of it will go like there. So we're going to dig out all of this at some point once we've got a floor maybe just so that we can have the pipes go into there. That needs a drawer controller still and they all need to be locked. So I mean really uh, at this point it's a case of getting all the machines in. We could probably nick a furnace from over there and get that in. You can see how this would work. I think I'll do another video where we put together all the pipes and stuff and sort of arrange them and try not to get them to cross over each other and stuff like that. But this is the uh, first video wherein we 
display our plans and talk a little bit about the mechanics of these mods that are working together. So thanks for watching, a little bit of behind the scenes uh, and in between streams and then maybe we'll do that on stream, maybe we'll do it in between. Look out for that and I'll see you next time. Bye!